Everybody, it's uh, Remembrance Day here in Canada, so it's a very important day today, you guys. So, if you could put your head down and give a prayer for the lost veterans, um, or even the veterans that are out there, because without those guys going to war for our country, you know, we wouldn't have as much freedom as we do today. So, I'd just like to thank uh, any war veterans on this channel. Thanks a lot for um, your service for the country that you're in really means a lot okay guys so what so uh for all my s normal subs what do you guys think of that new intro you think it's too long or i don't know i'd like to hear your opinions on it anyways i've been so friggin busy just gathering wood carving pumpkins and carving christmas trees and you know you guys see i got all this bark from uh, agassiz in british columbia canada I got a process. I got most of it processed, but I brought this piece home. It's pretty dang clean. Little tiny bug holes there, but nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, just a couple there. So, anyways, I'm gonna carve once again, guys. Yes, a wood spirit. I haven't carved a wood spirit in about three weeks. And uh, in my opinion, guys, they're the most funnest to carve. You know what I mean? You can make them however you want to make them. And the more you do, well, the better you're going to get. You know what I mean? So, guys, I'm going to be selling this bark. I don't have that much of it. But I'll, if you want to send me an email at kd1dude at gmail.com, go ahead and uh, we can talk about it. I'm not looking to get rich here, guys. And I'm definitely not a car salesman. So I'm going to be carving this wood spirit again with this cut saw extreme on my Fordham flex, um, sorry, Dremel flex shaft. I'm using a Dremel 3000 today. And this is a cut saw extreme burr. Go to the description below. Go to cut saw, use the co code CFUSION, save yourself 5%. Okay, that's out of the way. So this is what I've decided what I'm going to do for the giveaway. 10,000K giveaway. An eagle head. I can't stand making staffs, guys. I just don't, it's just too awkward for me to work on them here when I, you know, they're just too long. So, but this is gonna be really, really nice when I'm done it. This is old, old Western red uh, cedar. Look at the grain right here. So yeah, this will be an eagle head and it will hang off the wall like that. So it's kind of looking down. Here, let's see. Uh, like this. See, I kind of got its eye uh, drawn in there too. That's just a template. Pete helped me uh, cut this out on his bandsaw because when I tried to cut it with my bandsaw, I broke my uh, what's the, the friggin' saw blade? I broke it. Jesus. Okay. So, anyways, this will be coming up pretty soon, guys. Ten thousand subs uh, giveaway right here. Eagle head. So, anyways. I'm going to carve this uh, wood spirit. I might carve two in here. It's a nice thick, chunky piece, right? Like, uh, what, I don't know. I don't have a tape measure around here. Oh, I did. I do have one. This is, uh, what, like two, two and a half inches or maybe a bit more by, I'd say the bottom's three inches. Some parts, four and a half. Four, three. So, anyways, I'll get uh, car. Oh, how long is this sucker? Nineteen inches. Okay, so maybe we'll fit a few wood spirits on here. I'll do fast forward carvings to the basic stuff, but I think key points I'll stop and, you know, like for the real beginning carvers, see if I can do a tutorial thing. Okay, but okay, guys. So when you're dealing with this bark stuff. Can be very shaly like look at this so what I do kind of before for the big pieces you're gonna cut a couple layers on the top that uh, are kind of shaly right I don't kill myself here anyway so if you don't have a Fordham 
or a bigger grinder to clean this up just use your screwdriver and try and chip it away like I did there okay, so I'm going to clean this up a bit with my uh, Fordham and you guys you can find a step-by-step -step tutorial in my playlist of how to carve a, a, a wood spirit but this is a quarter inch this is my Fordham Flex Jeff quarter inch cuts all extreme flame burr guys okay so I'm just going to clean this up quickly Okay, guys, you can see here I got it cleaned up. It looks like all the shale's gone. There might be a little bit right there, but because you don't want your nose flying off like um, I showed my previous videos, okay? So now what I'm going to do, there's going to be a face up here and a face down here. We'll see how it goes, right? So, I, like I always do in my wood spirits, I got a normal formula. This is my formula. You got your center line. I think it's good to have a center line on everything actually. So here's your nose. Okay. And you guys I want to stop and talk about safety for a second. Like um, you guys just make sure you got all the safety gear. If you're not if you're a very beginning carver and you're using these cutting bits and you're not that strong to hold on to the carving and hold this with one hand, get one of those um, gloves that are like cut resistant. So you can hold on to the piece with your gl glove and if this because these things do jump out if you don't have a lot of experience. And if you have that glove on, you can find them on eBay. Just you won't cut up your hand. Because these things are these things are skin grinders. You know what I mean? Or or figure out a table, work table for your um so you can clamp this piece down. Myself, I like to have it so I can move it around. You know, that's just the way that's the way I like it. But I'm not everybody, guys. And this is just my suggestion stuff, guys. It's like do do what you makes you comfortable i think a big part of carving too or any kind of art is lighting you know what i mean lighting is a big part of it so you got light from all sides you know i got a light on this side and i got a light on this side and wear your dust mask you know what i mean just be safe guys that's all i, I don't want to see anybody get hurt okay so i'm going to start carving this Okay guys, so you see I got all my blocking done okay, I got I, I did my straight cuts up here, straight cuts on the outside of the line for your mustache, try and keep this both sides of the mustache the same width, this one's a little bit thicker, but I got it all done. So this is a key thing too that I want to stop here, so now I'm going to cut straight down, and guys see how, oh I got to turn that down, see how uh, the bridge of my nose isn't too thin? See it's thicker there? Because some guys carve it too thin, draw it out too thin, and then you get a really thin nose at the bridge, right? So anyways, what I'm going to do here now, this is a key thing. I'm going to cut this straight down in the nose, okay? It's going to make the nose pop out, okay? And then I'm going to cut deeper on the sides of the nose to make the nose stick out farther and feather it out. But when I make this cut, okay, and then I feather away this mustache, you're going to see this mustache, this tip of the mustache, where his mouth would be down here. You're going to see this move farther away from the nose. You guys watch. Remember, it's like only that far now. But when I cut it, when I cut it and feather this away, you're going to see this here drop farther away from the nose. So don't be afraid to recut this point back in or round thing back in. Okay, so we'll do that now. I don't know 
know if that was recording or not. But anyways, look how far down the mustache is. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get some better lighting happening. Now look how far down the mustache is from the nose. Because I cut the nose in. The nose is sticking out now. I cut this and I feathered it back. And this part drops right here. It, the point drops back down this way. It used to really confuse me when I first started doing the wood spirits. My mustache would be like this thick by the time I was done. So let's draw a center line on here again. Okay. I like doing the points, guys. You don't. You can make this part round, so you can put teeth in there or whatever. But this is the way I do do it. I'll, I'll do some with teeth, front and bottom teeth. Okay. So now I'm going to carve this back in. I'm going to carve this out now. Okay. Roll this. And then I'm going to carve his bottom lip in. You can make it so his bottom lip's open, or you can make it so it's closed. Actually, I'm going to make this guy so it's, you just see the end of his bottom lip. So don't pay attention to that, okay? But now I'm going to carve this. Okay, never mind. I gave him a bottom lip down here so he's got an open mouth. But you see I brought the point back closer to the nose, okay? So what I'll do now is, um, let's see here. I'm just trying to make this as simple. Okay, another key point that I want to say, guys, and I say it in my other videos too. You see the bottom lip here, okay? This is the bottom lip, okay? See how it rides up here? Okay? Go right up the mustache. So now what I do is I get my cutter and I cut along there, deep in that way, only the bolt at that deep, on both sides, on both sides. So it doesn't look like it's riding up anymore, okay? You know what I mean? So it separates the lip from the mustache. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut deep right in here, and right in here, separating the lip from the mustache. Okay, so when I was trying to film that, my uh, phone holder thing broke. My phone fell down. I'm lucky it didn't break. Thousand dollar phone. So, anyways, you can see how it's separated, kind of right when you look at it front on. This guy's got a snarly lip. Rawr, my lay, rawr. See, it's coming down on this side. So, I don't know how I'm going to film the rest of this video, but uh, maybe I'll just carve and uh, tell you what I'm doing step by step. I think I'm going to put the eyes in now. This gives, I'm going to try and give this guy real eyeballs. Okay? So you got one eye here and one eye here. No, I can't do real eyeballs. It's just i got to have this phone on a tripod to uh, show how I do it. So I'm just going to do the undercuts, guys. So I got them drawn on. I'm going to cut on a 45 under there. Okay, not straight up and down. Don't make a big, my opinion, guys, again, my opinion, don't make a big hole down here. Cut nice and th a nice thin line. You know, maybe even use a smaller burr. Uh, this is a Cuts All Extreme Taper Burr. See how thinner it is? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this to cut my eyes there okay so whatever this is going to be tricky without this on that tripod okay there's his eyes cut in you guys see this is what i was talking about see those little slits on a 45 underneath his eyebrows that's how i do it guys Wood spirits don't have to have eyes. I think they look more mystical, mystical without them, actually. I think when they got eyes, well, don't get me wrong, they look cool with eyes, too. But when they got eyes, they're st starting to look more like real human kind of wizard things. So, now, next step for me. Oh, I shaped his nose, too. Sorry, guys. I just, whatever. And this guy's got a chin, too, so 
when you put the beard hairs in, it gives it a more realistic effect too. Okay, so now his eyebrows. I draw, draw, draw the lines on. Normally I wouldn't draw the lines on, but I draw the lines on. Now I cut. This is hard, guys. Now I cut about that deep on that line and feather it away, okay, to make his eyebrows raised up. Liz, this one's for you. Okay, so I'm drawing his eyebrows in. I'm going to cut on this side of the line. Then I'm going to feather this away. Okay, and then bring it down here. And then I'm going to cut this guy's forehead in. So, but I can't film doing it, guys. So it's just going to be a step by step. Talking. Talking, guys. Lots of talking. Uh, talking. Talking! Okay, guys, I know my fan's still running, but I just want to show you. So there's how high I got the eyebrows. Now I'm going to cut the forehead in, okay? But the eyebrows, I'm going to round this off, this edge. I'm going to make them smooth, like a smooth transition from here to here, okay? But now I'm going to cut my forehead in. I don't know, wherever I want to cut it. I think a smaller forehead looks better than a bigger forehead. When you got a big forehead, it looks like an alien. When you got a small forehead, it looks like cool, like it's coming out of the wood. Yo! Yeah. Okay, so you can see there. Look right here, guys. Perfect example. This is what, when you're carving on the surface of cotton wood bark, it's very shaly. So the keep, deeper that you carve in here, the more consistent and sold and uh, pure it's gonna be. But this was just on the surface and his eyebrow ping flew off. That's okay though. You just carve deeper, we carve it in. So you look at the forehead here, okay? Lots of people guys, not everybody, but some of the, some of my subs are people that send pictures in for the world wood carvers. They'll just cut the forehead in there and just round this a bit. And then it looks funny because the forehead's sticking higher than the nose. You know what I mean? So take this down. So this is hard guys, sorry, I usually. Take this forehead down from the eyebrows down this way. Do you know what I mean? Take it down that way, in. Slant the whole forehead in, not too much, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to look like a human forehead. So slant, cut it in, slant it in that way to your cut, almost. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay guys. So you can see his foreheads and he's got a little small forehead, but see how it sloped back? You see that? Now it's not sticking forward, smoke back, slope back. And it looks cool if you ask me. Okay. You could even cut the eyebrows back farther, like deeper, to make the nose stick out the farthest part in the face. But I don't know, I like this guy. So this is the time, again guys, Call woodworking right there. You put your piece up. You can get it to stay. It's hard with this holding this phone. Yeah, there you go. So just whatever. Get the piece up. Drink your pop. Do whatever you gotta do. Drink your coffee. And stare at it and see what you want to do next. Personally, I think I'm ready for beard hairs. But whatever. Um, I'll decide then. I'm not going to carve two faces in this, guys. I just, because my camera holder broke, i got to make another one. I'm going to carve beard hairs all the way down here. I'm not going to make them roundy and floaty. It's a flat surface right here. I'm ready to lose it. I'm ready to lose it. And just carve beard hairs in here with this aluminum cutting burr, guys, and do it on edge. And take your time. I know some videos I was like, rah, 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 rah. but now I'm getting more used to it. I slow down. I make deeper cuts, thinner cuts, and just separate all your cuts, guys. I'll show you when I'm done. And another good hint, too. Oh, God. Oh, sorry for that, using that name. But draw your, draw where you want your beard hairs to start, okay? So there you go. That's where my beard hairs are going to go. And they're gonna all come down, bam, 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 this way. Okay, yeah, so let's, break time. Yeah, okay, so I've decided that I'm gonna carve all the uh, mustache hairs in, beard hairs, do the eyebrows. You can even put age lines up with this little bit, this aluminum cutting bit. 
You can order them on Amazon or eBay or Amazon, guys, but make sure they're aluminum cutting bits, not the metal working bits. They're a little bit more expensive than metal working bits. Okay, so I'll get that done and um, we'll get back to you. Okay, guys, you can see here I got all the beard hairs cut in. That took me about 15 minutes. I got his eyebrows done under his eyes. His age lines in there, his mustache done, okay? So what I'm gonna do, again guys, for the millionth time, these little flop sanders, you get these little, it's just emery cloth, real thin emery cloth, okay? You get these little screw bits when you buy the Dremel kits that have the zip cut discs, or you get these little shank things too, when you buy these kits on uh, Amazon, brush wheel kits, okay? So I can take these little brush wheels off and cut the sandpaper and put it on that. It's a reversible screw head, okay? So I'm gonna sand this quick, okay? And then I'm gonna get some dollar store paint, paint brush. I'm gonna paint inside the eyes, the nose, the nostrils, and the mouth, okay? And then I'm gonna stain it. You guys, I just really wanna say too, when you got a little sander like this, this is 80 grit, you can do some shaping with this, you know what I mean? You can clean up the inside of the nose, you can clean up the nostrils, you can do a little bit of shaping when you have something like this. Get it, get something like this, guys. It will, it will, uh, how can I say this? It will make you love carving a billion times even more for the sanding part of it, guys. I'm telling you, get one. Okay, guys, I got it all sanded up. See how I shaped the nose with that sander? That took me five minutes to sand this, guys. Five minutes. Get one of those. I'm telling you, your life will change. Okay, so now for the black dollar store paint. Here's a shout out to my buddy in Ireland, Belfast. His name's Bap. His uh, YouTube channel is I Can Carve. You guys might want to check him out. He's doing some wood spirits and he's a pretty funny guy. So, um, yeah, this is my shout out right here, Bap. Here is a carving fusion paint tray. I sell these for, I don't know, I'll give you a discount for $2,000. Special Carving Fusion Paint Tray. I'll even throw in a brush. Yeah, so let me know, guys. Just send me an email. So whatever, I'm going to paint inside the eyes, the mouth, and the nostrils black right now. I don't want to be filming this because I'll probably mess it up when I'm filming. Let me know about the paint tray, guys. You can see there I quickly put the black paint in. There's nothing special about it. Just, you know what I mean? I use this black stuff when I'm going to use darker stain, guys, because it just adds, you know, features to the. It makes it look darker in there, right? So if you guys want to buy this second-hand paint tray, I can clean this paint tray up really quick and sell it to you for, I don't know, a thousand bucks. I'll even clean the paintbrush for you. Baps, um, I can carve. I'll leave a description down below to his uh, YouTube channel, guys. Go, go check out his videos. Pretty funny guy. Great guy. I've been talking with him quite a bit. I can carve, bop, description. Okay, so I'm gonna let this paint dry a bit and then I figured, I don't know, if I wanna use this poly shade or stain. I'll figure it out, I'll make up my mind. Okay, so I figured out I wanna use this poly shade, guys. This is, uh, what's it called? Royal Walnut poly shade, okay? So you guys don't forget to mix up your uh, stuff really good. Oh, I'll also sell these uh, paint mixers too or poly shade mixers, whatever you want to call it. Mix it up good, make sure there's nothing sticky in the bottom because that's what all the color is going to be. So I got this um, dollar store foam brush and I'm going to put it on and we'll get back to you. Okay, you guys can see now how that black that I put in the nostrils and the eyes really makes this piece stand out. The, eye, the, makes look, the eyes look darker, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, again, I, this stuff's still a bit wet. I like doing it a little bit wet because it kind of smudges when I do it. I'm gonna hit it quickly. Again, this is with this little flap center. It's almost toast anyway. So I'm just gonna hit the high points with this just barely, just to give it more high points, right? Make it brighter, brighter, closer to you, darker, farther away, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'll do that right now. Just a little bit, really slow. Okay, so there you go. This crusty old guy's done. I like the way he turned out. And you guys, if you notice my eyebrows, somebody pointed out to me that I normally make my eyebrows go up and down. But they don't go, real eyebrows don't go up and down. They go across. So 
I, you guys, there you go. I listened to one of one of somebody that commented on my videos. I listened to all the comments, guys. So what I want to do with this piece, because I haven't been able to uh, make the uh, 10,000 sub giveaway, I want to give this piece to one of my um, subscribers. Okay? So I'm going to make this real simple. I got a live feed Thursday night at 5 o'clock Pacific time, okay? A live feed, 5 o'clock Pacific time. You have to be a subscriber to my channel, and you just have to leave a comment on this video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a bunch of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, And I'm going to cut them into little squares, and I'm going to put it in a hat. And say if it's somebody leaves uh, the 20th comment, and I, because you can see from start to finish from new comments, or the 17th comment, or the 60th comment, but I'm just going to draw, count how many comments there are, and I'm going to, write those numbers on a piece of paper and draw it from a hat for my live feed Thursday um, night, five o'clock Pacific time. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I like this guy, I almost want to keep him. This is, uh, you guys, once you, this is the bark that I found and I'm gonna be selling if you want to email me at Canadian One Dude. I'm not gonna sell any less than six pieces, guys, because I got the box order to ship, ship them. I'm not a car salesman and uh, I'm not a wood salesman, but, you know, I, I'd like some of my subs to get this because this is really nice cottonwood bark. Look how it holds the detail. I sanded these beard hairs twice. And look at them. Look at the eye detail on the eyes. I sanded that twice, guys. So this is very, very hard cottonwood bark after you get off the surface. And you get a little bit deeper, but you can see the depth there. It's still, I don't know. Man, I want to keep this guy. So anyways, guys, leave a comment, be a subscriber if you want, and you got a chance to win this next Thursday, five, no, sorry, this Thursday, five o'clock Pacific time. Hope everybody's good. Sign your pieces, people, sign it.